picture a world in ruins, earth itself gasping for life. The seas are lifeless, the skies choked, the land a furnace of dust and fire. Nearly everything, gone. This is not imagination. This was reality, 252 million years ago, after the greatest extinction in our planet's history. But from silence came rebirth. Strange creatures crawled from the shadows, new hunters sharpened their teeth, and in this crucible of chaos, something extraordinary took its first steps, the ancestors of the greatest rulers Earth has ever seen. This is not just the beginning of dinosaurs. This is the story of how life itself rose from near oblivion at the dawn of the Triassic. The Triassic does not begin with life, it begins with death. 252 million years ago, Earth faced a cataclysm so complete it came close to sterilizing the planet. This was the Permian-Triassic extinction event, also known as the Great Dying. Triggered by immense volcanic eruptions in Siberia, the Earth's crust split open for hundreds of thousands of years, releasing torrents of lava and clouds of toxic gases. Carbon dioxide levels soared. Methane seeped from the seafloor. The atmosphere turned into a greenhouse of unimaginable intensity. Oceans, once thriving with corals, trilobites and countless fish, became stagnant, stripped of oxygen. Hydrogen sulfide, a deadly gas, bubbled from the depths. An estimated 90% of marine species vanished. On land, forests withered and deserts spread across the supercontinent of Pangaea. More than 70% of terrestrial vertebrates perished. Entire evolutionary lineages disappeared forever. For millions of years afterward, the planet seemed barren. Ecosystems were broken. Diversity was a shadow of what it once was. Yet life is persistent. In the earliest Triassic, strange survivors emerged. Among them were the Lystrosaurs, squat, beaked creatures related to mammals. In this time of scarcity, they thrived, making up nearly 90% of some fossil communities. Their success came from adaptability. They burrowed to escape heat, ate almost any vegetation, and reproduced quickly. Alongside them were early amphibians, clinging to waterways where moisture remained. And scattered across the land were the archosauriforms, reptilian pioneers that would one day give rise to crocodiles, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs. The earth itself was still unstable. The climate swung wildly between searing droughts and sudden floods. With little plant cover, rivers tore through the soil, leaving scars across the land. Food webs were fragile, easily collapsing with the loss of a single species. This was a world in recovery, walking on the knife edge of survival. Every creature that endured carried within it a story of resilience. The stage was set. Out of the ashes of near total annihilation, evolution began to experiment again. And slowly, the first hints of a new age took form. As the Triassic progressed, Earth slowly healed. Plants returned to river valleys, insects buzzed across the air, and food webs grew more stable. With each passing million years, evolution tested new designs. Out of this experimentation came a new kind of reptile, the archosaurs. Their name means ruling reptiles, and in time, they would live up to it. Unlike the sprawling lizard-like creatures that came before, archosaurs stood taller, with legs placed beneath their bodies. This simple innovation gave them strength and stamina. They could run longer, breathe deeper, and hunt with greater efficiency. Where other creatures stumbled in the heat of Pangaea's deserts, archosaurs thrived. Among them were terrifying predators. Postosuchus, for example, stretched over five meters long. With massive jaws lined with serrated teeth, it was a top hunter of its time. But not all archosaurs were giants. Some, like Colophysis, were small, lightweight, and fast. Early experiments in the body plan that dinosaurs would later perfect. The Triassic was also a time of armored oddities. Creatures like Desmatosuchus wore rows of bony plates down their backs, with spikes jutting from their shoulders, natural defenses against hungry carnivores. While the land saw these ruling reptiles expand, the seas were no less dramatic. The oceans, once empty after the Permian extinction, were now filled with entirely new kinds of marine reptiles. The ichthyosaurs evolved sleek, fish-like bodies, resembling dolphins of the future. They became agile predators of squid and fish, some growing longer than a bus. 
Nothosaurs with elongated necks and paddle-like limbs hunted in shallow waters, snapping at prey with needle-sharp teeth. And then there were placodonts, heavy-set reptiles with crushing jaws built to crack shells, some even developing turtle-like armor. The skies, too, saw their first rulers. Toward the end of the Triassic, the pterosaurs, the first flying vertebrates, took to the air. Their wings, stretched skin over elongated fingers, allowed them to soar over coasts and rivers in search of fish and insects. This was a world bursting with innovation. Every niche, land, sea and sky, was being claimed by new reptilian dynasties. Evolution was sculpting the future rulers of Earth. But among these rulers, one branch, still small and unremarkable, would one day eclipse them all. They were the first true dinosaurs. For now, they were only whispers in the Triassic wilderness, but their time was coming. Amid the Triassic's fierce competition, a new kind of creature quietly took its first steps into history. They were small, unremarkable at first glance, yet destined to change the world. These were the very first dinosaurs. The earliest known species appear around 230 million years ago, in what is now South America. Fossils like Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus reveal animals barely the size of a dog. They were swift, lightly built predators, hunting insects, small reptiles, and even each other. What made them different was not their size or strength, but their design. Dinosaurs carried their legs directly beneath their bodies, unlike most reptiles that sprawled to the side. This allowed them to run efficiently and breathe at the same time. Their lungs, supported by air sacs, worked like powerful bellows, a system still seen in modern birds. It meant endurance. In a world of sweltering heat and scarce food, that was a decisive advantage. Soon they began to diversify. Some evolved into nimble carnivores like Herrerasaurus, with long tails for balance and claws for seizing prey. Others, like Plateosaurus, grew larger, feeding on tough ferns and conifers. At up to nine meters long, they were the first giants of the dinosaur lineage, a preview of the colossal sauropods to come. But in the Triassic, dinosaurs were not yet dominant. They shared their world with powerful rivals. Massive predators like Postosuchus still ruled the plains. Crocodile-like relatives called Rausukians competed for the same prey. Armored reptiles grazed the vegetation alongside early herbivorous dinosaurs. For tens of millions of years, dinosaurs remained just one branch in a crowded evolutionary tree. They were survivors, not yet conquerors. Their success was fragile, their future uncertain. And yet, the traits that defined them, endurance, efficiency, adaptability, were quietly shaping their destiny. With every generation, they were preparing for a moment when the balance of power would shift. In the shadow of giants, the dinosaurs were waiting for their age to begin. To understand the Triassic, we must step back and see the stage on which life was rebuilding. The Earth was one vast landmass, Pangaea. From pole to pole, the continents were fused into a single supercontinent, surrounded by the global ocean of Panthalassa. Its sheer size shaped everything about the world. Inland, far from the coasts, stretched endless deserts, some larger than any desert known today. The air shimmered with heat, rain was rare, and storms, when they came, were violent and brief. Along the coasts and river valleys, however, life flourished. Here, forests of conifers, cycads, and ginkgos grew, providing food and shelter for reptiles and insects alike. Ferns carpeted the floodplains, while towering horsetails thrived near swamps. The climate was unpredictable, summers seared, winters chilled, the lack of oceans to moderate temperature meant the seasons swung wildly. This instability forced life to be resilient, and only the most adaptable survived. Beneath the canopy, insects buzzed much as they do today. Dragonflies, beetles and cockroaches. Ancient lineages that had already survived multiple extinctions. They formed the foundation of food webs, feeding amphibians, reptiles and the first small dinosaur hunters. In the rivers and lakes, giant amphibians lurked, some as large as crocodiles. Creatures like Mastodonsaurus waited motionless in murky waters, their enormous heads lined with teeth, ambushing anything that strayed too close. These were among the last of the great amphibian rulers, 
before reptiles took over their domain. But perhaps the most intriguing of all the Triassic players were the Cynodonts, small, warm-blooded synapsids, distant cousins of mammals. They had whiskers, fur, and differentiated teeth for slicing and chewing. Some likely lived in burrows, others hunted at night, avoiding the larger reptiles of the day. In them, we glimpse the beginnings of traits that would one day define mammals, sharper senses, warm-blooded endurance, and complex behavior. The Triassic was not only the dawn of dinosaurs, it was the quiet persistence of creatures that would one day give rise to mammals and ultimately to us. This ecosystem, strange deserts, lush river valleys, swamps of giant amphibians and forests filled with insects was a world both alien and familiar. It was a testing ground where every species, from towering reptiles to tiny burrowers, played a part in shaping the story of life's recovery. For nearly 50 million years, the Triassic was a world of recovery, innovation, and fierce competition. Strange reptiles ruled the land, the seas, and even the skies. Dinosaurs had appeared, but they were still just one branch among many. Then, the Earth changed again. And once more, it was catastrophe that reshaped life. Around 201 million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea began to tear apart Enormous cracks split the crust as the Atlantic Ocean was being born. From these rifts, unimaginable floods of lava poured across the land. This event, known as the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province eruptions, lasted for hundreds of thousands of years. The consequences were devastating. Gigatons of carbon dioxide and methane filled the air. The planet's climate spiraled into chaos, scorching global temperatures, acid rain and a breakdown of ecosystems, the oceans, already fragile, grew acidic and oxygen-starved. This was the end Triassic extinction, the second great biological crisis in less than 50 million years. Roughly half of all species on Earth vanished. The mighty crocodile-like Rauisuchians, once dominant hunters of the land, disappeared. Many armored reptiles, amphibians, and marine groups were wiped out. Entire evolutionary experiments of the Triassic vanished into history's shadows. And yet, not everything perished. Dinosaurs, small and adaptable, endured. Their lightweight bodies, efficient lungs, and ability to thrive in harsh conditions gave them an edge when so many others collapsed. As their competitors vanished, dinosaurs stepped into the void. In the wake of destruction, they began their true ascent. No longer overshadowed, they spread across Pangaea, filling every niche left empty by extinction. The stage was cleared, the rivals gone, the Jurassic period was beginning, and with it, the age of dinosaurs would truly rise. The Triassic was a beginning born from endings, a fragile dawn after the darkest chapter in Earth's history. It was here that dinosaurs first appeared, not as giants, but as survivors, creatures shaped by chance, endurance, and adaptation. Had the great dying not cleared the stage, they might never have risen. Had the end Triassic extinction claimed them, their story might have ended before it began. Instead, they endured, and from their endurance came 160 million years of dominance, from the towering giants of the Jurassic to the legendary predators of the Cretaceous. The story of the Triassic reminds us that life is never guaranteed. It is fragile, unpredictable, yet endlessly resilient. Every end is also a beginning. And as we look back on the dawn of the dinosaurs, we are reminded of our own place in this cycle, the inheritors of a planet that has been remade again and again. This was the Triassic, the first chapter in the age of dinosaurs, and their journey was only just beginning.